So I know it's been a while since I've shown up here on YouTube. I am one of those YouTubers who disappears for a couple of months. If you're new here, if you have subscribed since I last posted my video, then welcome. I am a mum to six children. I homeschool. I live in Australia and I am always hope to be a consistent and a real content creator here on YouTube and on my blog. Um, thesimplemama.com and today I really wanted to talk about the homeschool lifestyle and how important it is and how much learning really does take place when we're really growing and thriving in our lifestyle at home and how we manage our time both for our children and for ourselves. Becoming really overwhelmed with school and with homeschooling often is a, a viewpoint of the lifestyle and how you're spending the hours of your day being non-essential if it's not filled with as much book learning as possible. And I think that there is always opportunities that you can fill your life with that are learning for your children from uh, helping out, from tasting textures when they're little. We understand all of this a lot more for uh, developing children and babies, how they have to learn by touch and play and hearing you speak, we understand that a lot better than I think we understand how that really does continue on, even until your children are, you know, preteen and I mean, even teenagers. We learn the best through the natural desire to learn. And I think that we all have the capabilities of making our lifestyles, you know, really great for a constant education, even though books may not be opened. And while I do definitely believe in book work and I believe in being consistent and making things as effective as possible, from my very first video here on YouTube, I said and I proclaim that I'm a minimalist homeschooler. I'm extremely minimal in the amount of book work that we do. Sometimes I do doubt just a little bit every now and then that I'm not doing enough, that my kids are going to lag behind, that they're not going to be able to catch up, that they're not going to be able to, um, you know, cope later on when they want to educate themselves for a career or, a, you know, or job choice or whatever they want to be doing, you know, studying choices, whatever they want to do as adults. But I realized that all of my children are still young and all of my eldest children are boys and I think that again changes the whole dynamic of how they need to learn and how much time you can really be effective when it comes to book work and so for me it's about knowing what your ultimate goal for homeschooling is and I have sat down the last few months and actually really nutted that out what is my ultimate goal for homeschooling what is my why for showing up every day it's about giving them the hands-on opportunities and giving them the ability to take the time to ask questions and to grow that desire to learn that's really what um, I'm about and I expect and I hope my children can thrive in the things that they really love and then they can thrive in the, um, the lifestyles that they you know everyone's suited for a different way of life everyone is suited for different topics everyone is suited for different ways of learning different ways of teaching different ways of relating to each other I hope that my children can thrive as adults um, by having grown that learning ability um, based on their needs and based on their desires. And I hope that I can be the homeschooler who can push the book work where it's necessary, but also have the confidence to pull it back where they need to. And that is a balance that I think you're constantly learning, especially because your children are constantly growing and changing. I want to take a moment actually to mention these science boxes. As you can see, my kids are currently opening and reading these science boxes. They were very excited for this. this they've been sitting where they can see them now for uh, several weeks while I've been getting my camera together because my camera died and that's why I haven't shown up here on YouTube in a while. Um, but this is from Mel Science. These are science kits. They're safe, fun, educational kits for kids from the ages of 5 to 16. They have STEM kits, which is more of that sort of engaging hands 
hands-on building science kits, but they also have physics for kids a bit older and they have chemistry as well. So my older boys are doing the physics kit and my younger one is doing the STEM kits. This was great. It kept them busy for a good 45 minutes. They really enjoyed it. They definitely asked me for more boxes. I am currently subscribed. This is something that I pay for. While I am promoting them, I pay for it on my own. I We have been doing science boxes now for two years. Um, not with this brand, but with another brand that we recently actually stopped paying for because it was getting really, really costly. It was double the price of the Mel Science box subscription. Uh, it was hitting at around $80 a month. Whereas this one here is 45 Australian dollars or about 30 US dollars a month. You're able to have as many boxes come as you want from all different areas. So from all different age groups, as well as you can choose from the physics, the chemistry or the STEM boxes. The subscription is 100% pausable. You are not locked in. You can cancel at any time. I really like that you can pause it because sometimes for me, all the monthly engagements that I have coming out of my account can get a little bit overwhelming. So I like that perhaps if we are going to be busier with something else, I can pause it for a month or two and then resume it. And so far, my kids really, really enjoyed it. And I'm really happy to share this product with you. So if you use my code down in the description, in, down in the description I'm going to say prescription so many times. If you use my code in the description box below and you sign up soon, you will get 50% off your first Mel science box. I really thought it really fit with the video today. I had already planned this video topic, but I did. I always do like how things fit together. And this is just a great way to have something come in. There's no books. It's hands on. It can be completely family orientated, even though one box is, you know, for one kid, it's not like that in my home. Everyone shares the box. Everyone gets involved. Um, and we have a lot of fun with it. And it's definitely something that is the, one of the highlights of our month. So um, that's enough of that, but I just want to let you know that this is a product that I'm promoting. We really enjoy it ourselves. I pay for it. Then you can use my code in the description and go and start the fun. I want to talk now to letting go of mainstream norms when it comes to homeschooling and letting go of the subject and how children need to be, especially as they get to the teen years, children are expected to be um, you know, mediocre or at least passable in every, you know, in every subject. That really isn't what I think a rich education is. That a rich education is where the children know how to learn and they know how to make themselves and equip themselves richly in a topic that really makes them tick. And I think that while, yes, I didn't thrive in maths, but you have to do a little bit of maths, but it's about knowing that I don't expect my children to pass in everything all the time simply because I need to tick a box on what they know. I always offer them new subjects. I offer them new opportunities. And we do do some things mandatory, you know, English, writing, reading. Obviously, these are things that kickstart your ability to learn. So there is that difference. But there's so much learning that takes place, which is interest-based, which can set them up for life. And there's no need, I think, to be constantly making sure that they're mediocre in everything that they're just passable in everything when there probably are almost for everyone certain areas and certain topics where they absolutely thrive. And I think that with homeschooling, we need to step away from this, um, you know, kid in the box to fit the system when it's not a system that we're part of. It's not a system that we should shape our homes around and it's not a system we should shape our lifestyle around. And we need to step back from that. We need to stop over scheduling. We need to stop making it so that everything that we do is fitting this state plan. And I understand that when you're registered as a homeschooler, when you have to go through ticking the boxes to some point, but I do know from experience that a lot of the time it's a lot of it's a lot of big words when it comes to, especially here in Australia, it's a lot of big words about what they have to do, what the government requires them to do. And when you are able to just dumb it down. It is actually really simple. And again, that's why I rely a lot on read alouds, small oral projects that are recorded, things like that, to get us through those tick box style learning, which sometimes you have to take place in, but definitely not creating my whole lifestyle around those guidelines, which I don't particularly always agree with. And I think that if you're really willing to really think outside the box, um, there are so many circumstances that you can get around through lifestyle learning and through being able to label things as learning, which really are learning and being able to record that and 
be able to pass those and tick those boxes. And the last thing I really want to talk about and really want to hit home is that your homeschooling is only as effective as your lifestyle. And that goes for you as a mum, the same as your children. I mean, in the home at the moment, we've just gone through a change where we are, uh, we've ditched all screens. We don't watch any screens except for on the weekends. You know, that thing, like screen time, which was just TV for me, creeping in, um, that is gone. And that's also changes that I had to make myself, you know, getting up early, making sure that I had my Bible time, my prayer time, making sure that I had moments alone, going to bed earlier, um, you know, making sure that my exercise was consistent, making sure I'm eating well, making sure I'm taking the time to be with each child. And all of that comes from culling the extra, culling the overscheduling, the, the sports, the trips to town all the time. Like sometimes you do have to be minimal in order to create the bandwidth as a mum to create their learning lifestyle for your children. So I think that you need to be able to focus and hopefully we can all focus on little things that we can do day to day, which create that learning lifestyle and create, and this have, we need to create so much less emphasis on books and uh, systems around getting more books and systems on creating more time for books and systems to make it like fun so kids can pay attention to the books and you know learning is fun and you can always use so many fun facts and book-based learning in the real world but you can also just use the real world for learning and never forget that and I hope that this is encouraging to anyone who is overwhelmed at the moment and feeling like their life and their days just aren't long enough to fit school into and all the book work into. If that's you, then perhaps you need to look into some things that you could cull and maybe some things, and maybe it's introducing different learning opportunities to your children, which aren't in a book. And I just, I have left a list of books I have been reading lately, which has been helping me on my own little uh, growth journey, which I've been having in the last few months. Books, Podcasts, podcasts are really great. I love to listen to a podcast while I'm cleaning. Um, yeah, audio books, which I listen to while I'm walking. You know, things that I'm just constantly uh, absorbing information from other mums who are older and wiser and raised children already. Thank you for watching and until next time, bye.